Hey guys, so today we're going to go over magnetic fields and magnetic field, magnetic field lines. Okay, to start off, I'm going to draw us a picture of the Earth and a little picture of the moon. Oh, oops, this is the moon. And the reason I'm doing this is because the Earth and the moon experience a force on one another due to gravity or due to a gravitational field, right? So they're not touching each other, but they experience a force. And this is very similar to magnets, okay? Another thing, positive and negative charges, right? They also experience a force, even though they don't have to be touching or be touched by anything, to be attracted towards one another. So they experience this attractive force. Right? And similarly with the moon and the earth. The earth is pulling on the moon this way. The moon is pulling on the earth this way. So they experience these, experiencing these forces, but nothing's actually touching them. Okay? All right, so let's get into it with magnets. I'm going to draw two magnets. Here's one North Pole, South Pole. Here's the other North Pole, South Pole. And I'm sure you've noticed when you've played with magnets, depending on how you orient them towards each other, they will either be attracted to each other or they will repel each other, right? And it's nothing that you're doing. It's just happening all on its own. They're not touching each other. There's, there's just this force there, and that is due to the magnetic field. So when magnets are oriented like this, North Pole and North Pole next to each other, they will repel each other. And when they're oriented the other way, like this, South Pole, North Pole, they are attracted to each other. Now, magnets, the magnetic field is produced by the movement of electrical charges, or the movement of charged particles. So another way you could say that is a magnetic field is produced by current. And this the movement of these charged particles causes this electric field which has directionality and it has magnitude. So it's a vector field. Okay. Um, another interesting property about magnets that's important to know is that they have these two poles, a north pole and a south pole. So they are... Uh, they have this dipole property, okay? And you can't have a magnet without a north pole and a south pole. If I were to cut this magnet in half and try to take this south pole, I would actually just realize that it's another north pole and south pole. I just made make it a smaller magnet, okay? All right. Now, the way we represent the magnetic field produced by a magnet, produced by the, or within a magnet produced by current is through magnetic field lines, right? Now, the way we're gonna define the direction that a magnetic field line points is the direction in which the north pole of an applied magnet would experience a force. So let me show what I'm talking about. If this is the south pole, this is the north pole of this bar magnet. If I were to take a compass, here's a compass, and we're gonna use red, as the North Pole, here's the North Pole, and then we'll just continue using black. I'm just gonna do it this one time because it takes forever to draw. But here's a compass. We see that the North Pole of the compass is attracted towards the South Pole of our bar magnet, like this. It has this attractive force going this way. And if I would take my compass and put it on the side here, I would see that the North Pole of the compass is attracted directly horizontal and the south pole of the compass is directed that way. So it'd be like this. And you can probably guess if I had to draw or put my compass right here, the south pole would be pointing towards the north pole of our bar magnet and the north pole of the compass would be pointing away like that. Okay. Now, so this is kind of a way you can grasp the direction of the magnetic field at these moments on the north end of our, or the north pole of our magnet, the magnetic field is pointing away. On the south pole, the magnetic field is pointing towards the, um, the magnetic field is pointing towards the south pole of our magnet. So we can actually redraw this whole thing to get a better picture of it, like this. I'm gonna change it back to black. 
Here's our bar magnet. Here's my north pole. Here's my south pole. Oops. And I'm going to see it's going to look something like this, where the magnetic field is going away from the north pole and it's being attracted towards the south pole. And it goes all the way around on both sides, just like this. Okay? It always goes north to south. All right. Cool. So that's kind of how we represent the magnetic field with these magnetic field lines. It is the direction in which the north pole of an applied magnet would experience a force. So if I would hold the north pole of a magnet over here, it would experience a force outward because it'd be repelling the north over on this side. I mean, it'd be repelling the north end of an applied magnet. All right. Now, interesting and key things to note about magnetic field lines in the magnetic field is one, um, magnetic field, magnetic field lines of the magnetic field always produces a closed loop. So if I have this bar magnet, here's my north pole, here's my south pole, it is going to form a closed loop in that here's my magnetic field and it goes all the way through my magnet. It doesn't just end at the south pole. And begin at the North Pole, it goes all the way through, all right, heading this direction. And same thing on this side, it goes all the way through. Okay, so that's good to know. They form closed loops. It doesn't just disappear once we get inside the magnet. Additionally, we can see that um, magnetic field lines will never intersect with one another. So... If I were to have a magnet right over here, okay, here's its uh, north pole, here's the south pole, and we have its field lines going like this. Uh-oh, we would never have them intersect with one another. So this right here would never happen. And kind of part of the reason you can think about why this is is because if you were to take a mat or a compass, I mean, and you would apply it here, what direction would the north um, pole of this compass point? All right, so I'm going to use red again. Here, the north pole would want to point, due to this field line, it would want to point kind of like this way, right? And due to this one, it would want to point this way. So the, the compass would have no way to differentiate which way to point. So these... And that's just kind of way you can think about it. This is why magnetic field lines never intersect because it completely screws with the direction of the force of the magnetic field. All right. Now I'm going to redraw one more thing to show the last principle that I want to talk about, the last thing to note about magnetic fields. And that is, oh, I don't want to use red. And that is that the density of the field lines, north pole, south pole, is proportional to the strength of the force of the magnetic field. So here I go. I've got my magnetic field. And remember, they actually go all the way through. They're continuous loops. So, and they don't intersect, even though it looks like I'm kind of trying them intersecting. Uh, I apologize for that. But here we go. So here, these are my magnetic field lines, and they're going like this way, right? They go from north to south. If I were to look at this point right here, I have one magnetic field line passing through it. The density, the, the collective amount of magnetic field lines is very small, so therefore the force that is felt here due to the magnetic field is very small. Conversely, if I look at this point right here, right at the North Pole, or right here at the South Pole, where I have a ton of magnetic field lines converging together, or not converging together, but like very close to each other, like it's much more densely packed, I'm going to feel a much stronger force at this point due to the magnetic field. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. I uh, hope you enjoyed. Until next time.